Hey guys, welcome back. Today will be an important video. I'll share with you my thoughts in real time. I'll be updating my trades as well. So before I begin, do help me out by tapping the like button. Thank you. My channel's goal was to share my journey of how I accumulated my wealth because I believe it is the process that should be shown and not the results. The journey and process is what matters the most and I believe by showcasing my process or journey to becoming a billionaire, it will be the best way for you guys to learn. The other goal for this channel was always to revolutionize education. The traditional education system teaches you what to think and my way of approach is to teach you how to think. I've mentioned this before, to understand things fast, you have to identify patterns that always seems to give you the same result. This way of thinking is reasoning by analogy. It's the most effective if you have to make an urgent decision because this will give you the highest probable outcome that you desire. To understand things deep, you have to use first principle thinking and you do that through acquiring the knowledge to the questions that you're asking. You have to break the problems into their basic element, reverse engineer and work your way up back to the problem. Based on my knowledge now, these are the problems of how our society is running. There are too many people taking resources rather than making resources. And the funny thing is nobody realizes. In fact, our parents and society glorify jobs like bankers and lawyers. The reason why school and healthcare is so expensive is because of subsidies. Government subsidies to be exact. Now you might think that this is counterintuitive. How can a government subsidize education and healthcare and it ends up costing more? Because you have government backing. You can overcharge for your service. You can be wasteful of your resources. Nobody questions what is the actual cost of a vaccine, medicine and surgery. And since you don't have the care about being efficient and there is plenty of cash from the government, you can do merger and acquisition, you buy out all the hospitals and just be a very few players in the industry known as oligopoly. What is worse is that health insurance was not a must for every citizen, but because with an insured patient, the hospital in the past can charge way higher as compared to a citizen who does not have health insurance. The inefficient hospitals who rely on subsidies now prefers an insured patient over an uninsured patient. And then we have this self-fulfilling prophecy of why we need health insurance so that the inefficient hospital can be profitable while they milk as much as possible from the liquidity pool in insurance company. So here's a chart I want to show. Every industry that the government heavily subsidizes will result to inefficiency. You need further funding from banks and insurance companies. For example, tuition loan and health insurance. And that cost will be passed down to the regular citizen. The citizen will then have to bear this high cost of living. We can see here that industries with no subsidies can compete on a fair level playing field and they will be more efficient in capital allocation, high competition and they will drive the cost down. All these subsidies are money that must come from somewhere and it is paid by taxpayers. So basically, the governing entity is taking resources from business and people, subsidizing healthcare and education to make it more expensive for the people and businesses. Do you guys see the problem here? We are in this illusion that we think we are doing useful work, but we are actually not. And if the education system is designed for maximum profit, their priority is making money and not giving you the best quality education. And the thing is, many of us view it as a need to go through this education system and this shapes and conditions our worldview. People are not trained to think outside of the box and the system will produce even more inefficient people. These inefficient people will then run our government. And then the society will end up paying health insurance every month and pay for high lawyer fees to get their properties, pay for insanely high fees for education for their kids and the system continues. Now this is a very offensive and thought-provoking video, but the reason as to why I do this video is because of a major problem I see coming. And that is the Russian-Ukraine war. Now the war before this war is under a single order led by United States. So from 1991, since the Cold War ended, we are able to trade freely with almost every country. If a country is good at refining or providing services, then the country should focus on what it is good at. The country will then be maximizing their output, using their profits, buy raw materials from countries who can produce them at the lowest cost. So all the countries can focus on not making the resources and just facilitate through banking, establishing law, brokering property. The real effect of the Russian-Ukraine war now begins the transition from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. Now a unipolar world is a world led by superpower and a multipolar world is led by few superpowers. Russia took the smart calculated risk that the West and NATO will not retaliate if they invaded Ukraine. US cannot afford a war with Russia because it is mutually assured destruction and they are in too much debt at this point. It is also not in US strategic interest to protect Ukraine. Ukraine definitely matters more to Russia. So what they do is they sanction and block free trade in hopes of crippling Russia's economy. The world is so interconnected now that doing so just cripples everyone. At the same time, China is a rising adversary and US is a declining power. What this means is that all the superpowers will now have their own sphere of influence. US, EU, China and Russia. There will be supply chain shock. 
cost of energy, commodity and food is going to skyrocket. There will be no more free trade between everybody. We now have too much supply of printed money, but shortage of commodities and energy. Ukraine and Russia are major food energy commodity exporter to the whole world. No ships dare to go to Ukraine seaport. No insurance company dare to insure these ships. I see this war prolonging, with both sides unable to achieve victory and their objective, and commodity prices are going to remain shockingly expensive. To slow down price increase of our basic necessity, the Fed and central banks around the world will have to increase interest rates dramatically, removing liquidity from the society, slow down money velocity as much as they can. Now if this happens, we are heading towards price continually climbing, decreased output, and we are going towards a stagflation. Energy, commodity, food, logistics, and manufacturing are the backbone of the economy. It sucks that we just came out of the pandemic crisis and now we are going back towards a recession. After connecting the dots and knowing it is going to be a multipolar world, countries are spending heavier on defence, free trade is decreasing, commodity and price of goods increasing rapidly, and interest rates most likely going to increase super quickly. We are heading towards a bear market. What I have shared a week or a month ago is already irrelevant. The situation has changed. Let's take a look at this clip. Or the most frustrating part of this, you have to reject patterns. Our brains like patterns and narratives. They fall in love with their own ideas. So once you've done all this hard work and I've created these scenarios and it's all beautiful, um, recognize that tomorrow's a new day. Something could have happened that completely changes your model and you got to throw it out and start it all over again. Just because something happened even yesterday doesn't mean that your model is going to actually work today. So you have to have a really limber, flexible mind. Um, the I always repeat the Socrates quote that the beginning of knowledge is really the awareness that you don't have any. So don't fall in love with your own ideas. Don't think that just because it was a really good idea a week ago that something hasn't material, materially changed that's going to actually change it. So for my options, I've wrote my options trade from $865 to $855 strike price. Over the weekend, I've absorbed $606 in losses. My new premium is $82.50 per share. Factoring the loss, my break-even is $778. I will not hold this trade till the end of expiry. I will find a suitable exit as I think the market is even more bearish than I anticipated. As for the problems in our society, I have friends who are bankers, lawyers, property and insurance agents. I don't mean to offend anybody, I just want to let you guys know the truth. I myself am figuring out how to be a maker and not a taker. And also because I see decentralization disrupting half the middleman brokers in the long term eventually. From geopolitics, I see countries are tilting towards self-reliance if the Russia and Ukraine war drags on. We are never going back to a single polar world with free trade. We will shift from non-essential to essential. Money will be tightened and will not be spent on luxury. Okay, if you like this video, do give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'm trying to reach 1.5k subs. Thank you and I'll see you next week.